Welcome in and welcome back, guys. You know, I always appreciate when you guys take the time to tune in. Charles in Charge here. We are back with another video. So I want to preface this first. I got to preface this video first by saying, listen, when someone is really, when someone has hatred and is just feeling so bitter towards you, there really aren't any limits to what they will be willing to do in order to ruin your life. And this is why, as we get into this video, you there's so many lessons you're going to be able to take away from it. And probably one of the main ones is going to be the fact that the choices you make today can have lasting effects on your life. You really have to be cautious about the people who you give your time and energy to. So we're going to get into the video. Bitter ex-girlfriend wants to file a permanent order of protection against the ex-boyfriend because he's still sending her daughter, who is not his biological daughter. It's not his biological daughter, but he's still sending her money. Check it out. Blatantly very rude to me, curses me. There's no kind of way for us to have a conversation without being cursed and on all that. And threatening I mean, I, he's already threatened my, well, actually almost threatened, well, almost killed me in 2020. Okay. He, he almost did. Luckily, okay. he did not because um, he yeah. actually re almost killed me okay. on that day. So I know his, um, and he was, you know, a simple battery that's yeah. by taking and family okay. violence. Is this probation over with? I'm not sure. So, in one of his conditions, he's not supposed to contact you or your daughter? No, that's what I would like the protection because I'm not, sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if my daughter, um, I'm not sure if she, you know, I don't want, I, I'm afraid of him, so I don't want him anywhere near okay, me. Okay, that's what I want you to focus on. So, articulate uh -huh. why right now you are afraid of him. Yes. So, she's afraid of him. And it's something I want you guys to pay attention to as we kind of watch this because she's already established that she has a healthy fear of this man, but her actions, as you're going to find out, don't always... So she's afraid of him. She's made that clear. And I want that's something I want you guys to remember and pay attention to because as you're going to kind of see as this story kind of unfolds is that her actions there hereafter of the things she did really didn't line up with someone who is in fear of the person who they're talking about. Let's keep going. Go ahead. I want to hear why you, what, what he's doing now. To make due, to the, due to the, um, I mean, due to his nature, you know, due to the actual incident that that happened in 2020, um, she's 16 years old and she's a minor, you know, we don't have, that's not her father. You know, I don't, I don't understand the intention behind it. And I would just rather feel safe to protect my daughter at this point um, from any contact. Why are you sending her daughter money? I mean, she's, she's 16 years old, Your Honor. We've been together for 15 of those 16 years. She's been my stepdaughter. She had, she makes all A's in 11th grade. I think I get, I, when she got into high school, I told her I'd give her $50 for every A. I'm very proud of her. She makes good grades. As far as I know, she's respectful to her mother. I, I, I don't see why she shouldn't get what she asked for. I don't. I'm, I'm not rich. I don't volunteer the money. But she she asked me for money like a child would ask her dad. Thirty dollars for the movie, twenty five dollars go to Lennox. And then, you know, I haven't. To be honest with you, I haven't seen Miss Ajia or her daughter in over a year and a half. I, this is the big. This day is this has been the biggest day of my life, waste of my day in almost two years. I'm not in a relationship with her. I don't communicate with her. Last email she sent me on December twentieth was to send, send her the money to buy Milan's Christmas gifts. And I'm looking at the dates. She asked for money on December 20th. This is Miss Starchill asking for money. She asked for money on December 20th. She filed this protection order on December 8th. No, it was more like November. It wasn't December 20th. This is the biggest, this is the biggest waste of the court's time. I'm, I'm, I don't deal with her. I don't have any dealings with her. I don't, right. know, I don't know if she <laughs> lives, works, or anything. So, Mr. Montgomery, let me ask you a question, and, and it doesn't matter. Are you still on probation? No. Okay. I moved out the house. When the incident she's talking about, she was so in fear for her life. When I woke up that morning, she was on my couch saying good morning, and she was sorry. She wrote a letter to get the charges dropped. I don't want any dealings with her. You asking for a protection, her asking for a protection order against me. Judge, to be honest with you, you might as well ask, because I'm not going to bother her no more than I'm going to bother you. I don't deal with her. Period. Like I don't at all. I'm, I'm I'm almost in here for a stranger. I don't I don't I don't talk to this young lady. 
I don't bother her. I don't call her daughter and ask her, do she need money? She calls, she asks me, she texts me as a, as, a, as a child would do her father. And I, I have to cash out transactions. And I can show you the emails where Ms. Stagel has been trying to contact me. I haven't even responded to one of her emails in over two years. So when she's contacted you, what, is she, what has she said? Evidence? Has she said, stop contacting my daughter? What has she said? I can show you. I still, I, just, I saved them all for this just reason. I'm, can you, I'm not sure if you can see this, Your Honor. I can. One more thing. Yeah, she's asking for a PlayStation and a. Is that from your step, the stepdaughter? No, that's from the lady, the young lady on the TV screen. And I mean, it looks like it was sent in November. No, that's December. I, can, I, I know that's that's I, December I can read. If you all feel I can read, it says one. It says um. December twentieth. I can, I can, I can read it for the judge. It says one right. more thing. Let me read it. Not sure. One more thing. Not sure if you want to help out with Chris's formula. I think we see what's happening here. I think what you see what's happening here, because as the story kind of begins to unfold, you're seeing that this is not really a situation where this woman is really in fear of this man. This is a situation where this woman wants control, control over this man's life, even though he hasn't had any physical, verbal, any sort of contact with this woman over the past couple of years, as he stated. The only contact he's had remotely close that she could identify is the contact with the daughter. And the fact that he's still sending her money. And he's sending her the money because she's contacting him and it's not the other way around. And because he still sends the daughter money but doesn't send the money directly to her, that seems to be where the disconnect is happening, where she is frustrated and where her anger is growing from. You, because you don't ask for money for Christmas gifts for someone who you're in fear of, who you have this healthy fear of. That, that, that's usually not how it works, typically. I appreciate you sending him a lot of money. However, I would appreciate it if you went through me first, if you do, um, and, 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 and please respect my wishes. And I said one more thing. That was the second thing, but that was what I said. And he, that, that, and that was, and, and then like the next couple of days, he sent her, I mean, he deliberately, it's where at this point, I want, we're we're done. We're not together anymore. I have, my a, daughter, question. My daughter. I have a question. Do you, do you ask for Christmas money for somebody you're in fear for your life from? Come on, man, you a joke. Bro, Lee, please leave me alone. I mean, but how is that? Just leave me alone, man. Let me live my life. I don't want no more harassment. So, Mr. Sergeant, what do you, I mean, so he was with you and your daughter. 15 years of your daughter's life. So, no. Well, that's what he said. No. <laughs> no. No. When, when I met them, she was one. She's 16 now. You do the math. Okay. Yeah, I'm a lawyer. I'm not good at math, but. No. Um, I, I was with Mr. Montgomery. My daughter was two. Um, I, from her being two until her being about eight. Your Honor, and, with all due respect, I can make this short and brief. I don't, I, I, don't bother, I don't bother her, and no, I don't want to bother her. I'd like to, I'd like to at least have a half a day at work because this has been the biggest waste of my time. I didn't know if I didn't attend. I mean, I was sorry, what, what is it that you want from him? Because I mean, I just want to be left alone. Okay, this is my concern. My my daughter and I safety. There's no reason why Mr. Montgomery should contact my daughter or my or me. And I, I mean, I was wanting to accommodate, like, kind of my daughter's wishes, kind of just trying to, um, I mean, you know, just trying to make things. But I don't want him to just contact my daughter. She's 16 years old. I have no contacting her. I don't want to see him anymore. I don't want her to see him so anymore. So what would you think his intentions are? That's what I have I no think. clue. The verbal gymnastics she's really trying to pull right now is horrific. It really is. You don't have a clue what he's up to and what's so interesting is that she's yet to even present any real actual factual evidence showing that he is some sort of threat towards her and her daughter now he whatever he did when they were in a relationship and he was physically harming her he had to pay for the consequences of his actions he was wrong that's how it went down he suffered the consequences for his actions he was obviously wrong for doing that but He's not on probation anymore. He's walked away from that part of his life, hopefully. And he's not even 
having contact with this woman trying to get her back. He's simply trying to go on and live his life. If she really has a problem with this, she should be pointing this conversation not towards the judge and this man, but towards her daughter and having a conversation with her, letting her know that you should not be contacting him anymore for anything. But the reality is this man made the choice, which I'm sure part of him maybe feels like he regrets it, but he made that choice to play a role as a stepfather in some capacity. It, and men aren't robots. You don't, you don't become a part of a child's life for one, two, five, eight years, however, whatever the length of time it was in this case, you don't become a part of a child's life and watch them grow and be there to watch all those significant moments and then you could kind of just click a button where you forget about all of that. Men have emotions and this is why it's important that you understand your choices and understand the lasting effects it can have if those choices don't end up working out. Well, I mean... But you email saying this is what she needs. You appreciate your help. But, my, but even before that, I said listen, because initially I thought that um, it was like trying to make things right with me, or trying to do something to make sure. But every time I would say thank you or something, he would be so angry and rude. So I mean, I don't really see. It's like some, some ill intention. Your honor, he's using his court and hogging up the court, wasting the court time. I, I guess he's trying to har further harass me and up I me mean, uproot my life. But I haven't, if it weren't for this court, she wouldn't have never even laid eyes on me in two, going on three years. So, Miss Thursdale, you don't want him, if it, I mean, if contact me. I, I would like, it's like a, a, a year, I would like a permanent. Okay, okay. No, that, that, that's not the way it all happens. But here's the thing. But, because, because, right. because honestly, so you, my daughter you, and I, my, one more thing. I'm saying this is what she wants for Christmas and you appreciate his help. So had he always told her, hey, when you make an A, I'm going to give you money? Okay. It, it's like, I, I have PTSD from dealing with him through my therapist. I mean, through that that time, when I was I was telling you, the time we were together from when I was two, when she was, I was six years, I abruptly left Mr. Montgomery for something better because he abused me a lot. And so when I started dating him again, it was the same thing. And so that's just it. Your Honor, I don't want him. I mean, I, I don't need to take my she can, she can talk to y'all. I'm not okay. interested. Hold on, hold on. Did he give her money before when she's made good grades? Yes, that's not in place. Huh? I mean, that was before I mean, when we were dating. We're not dating anymore. But I mean, so when did he stop giving her money? Always. I don't know. But the whole so, life. My point is that. I don't feel comfortable with any connection with Mr. Montgomery at all. Oh, and I want my daughter to be protected. So, well, oh, but your daughter's reaching out to him. So have you had a talk with your daughter not to contact him? Thank you. I think at this point, we all kind of get a sense of what's going on here. If he was simply sending her the money, there would be no fear. She wouldn't be having trauma. She wouldn't be still having PTSD if he was just sending her the money instead of the daughter. Her daughter's the one who is making the effort to reach out to him. And he's doing what a guy who was attached to a child and he watched grow up, he's doing what a lot of men would probably do in this case, who still have that emotional attachment to a child who they've seen grow. And that's be there for them. And I, as much as you can fault him for playing a stepdaddy role, you can't fault someone for being emotionally attached to a child, even if it's not their own. Yeah, I've had a talk with my daughter, but that's my daughter. I mean... It's my job to protect her. Well, exactly. But, but, but if she, well, but she's also 16. And I don't know how it was when you were growing up. When my mama said, don't. She meant don't. Well, I mean, it, it's not, I, I did say that, but I want her to all, also, this is a second layer of protection for her. So she is 16. And I don't know the intentions of Mr. Montgomery. I would just rather feel that um, this is protect my daughter and myself. So you want to protect I mean, your daughter from him sending her a $50 for every day? From any contact, period. But how has the contact with her been harmful is what I'm trying to say. It's, it's, I, it's, a, it's, it's, a, potential, it's a potential that I want to protect from. I don't know locations being shared. I mean, I'm just being a mother to protect. Okay, no, all right, I understand that, but here's I mean, the thing. Mr. Montgomery's okay? like 45 years old. I don't see why. I mean, that was when we were dating. During our, I mean... That's not my problem. Technically, it's not his daughter. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel like I'm not um, doing my daughter a service to protect her to the fullest because I don't know Mr. Montgomery's intention. So, so here's the thing. So 
I can't put a TPO in place because you think maybe something might be happening in the future. I mean, it's not like Tom Cruise. Movie. I mean, for the, the you know where it was like in the future, whatever. What that Tom Cruise movie? Anyway, I'm saying for the blatant violence that has been done to me, family right. violence been convicted of. Right, and I understand that he's been on probation and he's. He hasn't contacted you. He was, you know, your daughter was obviously reaching out to him and she's done that. So, Mr. Montgomery, I guess, block my daughter's number and tell her. And I guess when she's, you know, 18 and moved out or wherever, she can contact you if she wants. But, Ms. Tonsley, you also can't call him and say she wants help with Christmas. So, you, you, and but he, did you think a message he, before that? You said I was trying to show the message to you before that message. Did I say one more thing? He's calling you half of the message. Okay, but. But did you not tell him, don't send it to her, send the money to me? I'd say is her daughter just stopped sending her money. I, I, actually, I, I actually was told, I was actually told from Henry County to come to, to for the for the um, initial, additional protection. After the probation was over, I was advised to go through the county he lives in for the protection. Because it expired. Okay. So that's you why I, send in your, send in your daughter done. money. Sending your daughter money because she got an A, and then you saying, "Oh, this is what she wants for Christmas." Thank you for helping me out. That's not a threat. It, it's kind of a little contradictory. Did you see the message before? You just told me what it said. That send you the money and not her. No, yeah, no. It, it was it was very more detailed than that. I said, "Please." My daughter's voice. Hey, hold on. But then you responded and said, "This is what she wants for Christmas." If, no. if, he, if he was, that was, that was Here's what I'm going to do, Mr. Joe, because you didn't, that Mr. Montgomery, stop yeah, contacting. I'm stop contacting the, the, her daughter also. But could you, Here. could you put a note on this case? Because I swear to God, this, this young lady is like internally, like she, she'll go to the end of the earth just to ruin my life. I'm in right. court. I'm just somebody, telling I have, you don't send the daughter money. I changed my number. What more can I do? All right, there you go. She doesn't have his number. Don't want it. Both of y'all will put your emails in the chat. We'll send you the denial order, and y'all stay healthy and safe, and have a good New Year, Mr. Montgomery. Just don't you change your number. Don't block them. Block her. Whatever you got to do. Don't accept the emails or anything like that. Okay. Man, she's smiling because she get what she. This is no, all. She, this is just to Mr. Have Montgomery. Me. Mr. Montgomery. Is it the judge to tell you that? Like, Mr. Please, Montgomery. Yes. It's it's not in place. I'm just telling you to leave her alone. Okay. <laughs> Okay, can, block, block her daughter's number, block her number, block her email, move on with the law. I will continue. Thank you. Thank All you. Right, All right, guys, there you have it in. It's clear that for the daughter, this is the main or only father figure. She's really known. That's why she feels comfortable contacting and reaching out to him. And it's just terrible. It's just terrible that because of the mother's immaturity, basically that she doesn't see the bigger picture of her daughter having him around as a father figure. Let's go ahead and check out some of the comments, see what the people were thinking. One comment that says, women like her are vindictive, evil, and downright ridiculous. This is why some men walk away from their own children, dealing with these devils. That's true. This is a man who's a, not even a father, who's not even the biological father. Uh, so he has no legal rights. Imagine the things that men who have legal rights have to go through and suffer through when they actually know they should have these rights and this access, but they are denied because of a vindictive woman. Another comment says, see that another comment says, see how now that she's mad, first thing she says is he's not really the dad anyway. But yet they don't understand why men don't want to raise somebody else's kid. Shake my head. Another comment says they built a bond and she wants to take it away to hurt him. Because he obviously still treats the daughter like his own. I've been there. Another comment says, I just pray that the daughter comes across this and sees how vindictive her mother is. Because y'all know that she is going to lie about everything is sad. The daughter is going to find out who the mother is sooner or later. Because women like this cannot hide their true colors. The unfortunate reality is that the daughter may just very well end up repeating the same behaviors that she's seen her mother commit because that is her norm. That's her reality. Something we don't know, but we see it so many times where people emulate and imitate the behaviors they see growing up because they believe that's just normal behavior. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Questions, comments, thoughts, and your feedback, don't forget, drop them down below. Appreciate when you guys do that. And as always, until next time.